So you all know that uh, <clears throat> my colleagues at the beginning, you know, were struggling with this technology, the projector, the computer. <clears throat> After some time, I thought that uh, technology decided to end its non-cooperation <laughs> because it somehow knew that, you know, it has to cooperate to make all of us listen to a brilliant lecture. So thank you, Shimeta Ji. And I must, at the very outset, uh, appreciate the effort taken by my two colleagues, Shruti and uh, Lina, you know, who have been working on solar energy for quite some time. And uh, they made this suggestion, let's invite <coughs> Sri Pawanji for uh, this lecture and it has turned out to be very very educative for us not just educative but it has given us uh, many ideas for us to act upon both as individuals organizations and also to make the government of Maharashtra the government of India act more resolutely You know, he is, as he briefly mentioned in his, in his uh, you know, biography, he's a technologist, a technologist who turned into a policy influencer. And we need more and more such people in more and more domains. <clears throat> you know, people who can give right advice and make the political establishment accept that advice. And it's good that in solar, the government at the center, government in Gujarat, accepted good advice and we are seeing good progress. Of course, we have a long way to go. <clears throat> the target set in the Jawaharlal Nehru mission solar energy mission, 20,000 megawatts. And <clears throat> he's absolutely right that uh, we are uh, very conservative. We can do much more and we have to do much more. We simply cannot continue depending on uh, imports of fossil fuel, which is a big drain on our resources, besides being a polluter. <clears throat> So we have to be ambitious and we have to decide to realize that target. So 20,000 to 50,000 is something that the nation, the government must place before the, before the country, before the people and mobilize all the resources from scientists, R&D establishment, manufacturers, finance people, all of us should work together to make this target achievable in a very, very short time. <clears throat> Friends, you know, I was especially touched by what he said at the last, <clears throat> at, the, at the end of his presentation, which is very profound. He said the government of India must give the same priority to solar energy as it is today giving to space and nuclear energy. Nuclear energy, <clears throat> we all know the government at one time was even willing, the Prime Minister was willing to resign on the issue of the nuclear deal. How much capacity addition has been made in the last five years and how much is going to happen even in the next 15 years? Nuclear energy. I mean, that is the kind of importance the political establishment is, is, is giving to nuclear energy, why not to solar? Which can in fact make us more self-reliant. And besides making self-reliant, there is one more thing, solar energy, solar power is going to make our development more decentralized. Which is, which is very essential for inclusive development. Gandhiji's vision. 
So friends, you know, I will in fact uh, end my comments by quoting Gandhiji. You know, Gandhiji say, used to say that if you don't dream, how can, you, how can your dreams come true? You have to dream. And here is a dreamer who not only dreams, but he knows how to transform the dreams into reality. So thank you very much. <laughs> now I request my colleague Shruti to give a small uh, present. And thank you all for uh, responding to our invitation. Please keep coming.